The Milburn Stone Theater presents an MST audio production of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a dramatic interpretation of the personal letters of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, his wife, Tsaritsa Alexandra, and their families during the last era of the Romanov dynasty. Episode 3 Though Nikki and Alex had spent time apart before, this was the first separation of their engaged lives. Alex arrives in England to spend time with her grandmother, Queen Victoria, while Nikki returns to Russia. Their love for each other grows despite the distance, and the unification of their family begins. Nikki to Alex, April 21st, 1894, at the frontier. My own sweet precious Alex, we have just arrived in Russia, and you cannot imagine with what feeling of happiness and gratefulness to God I looked at the first people at our station who greeted us kindly. The journey was good, but too hot. I thought of you, my beloved one, and read through all you have already written to me before. It was still a comfort, those lines. How I wish to have been able to spend a few hours in Darmstadt with you, sweet one. Today we only stopped once for luncheon at a station called Konitz. There before one seat was standing your photo, the confirmation one, in a glass frame with our pink flowers. Japonica, I think, all around it. Is it not touching and curious? I took it with me. Now they have pulled our luggage over to the other train and I must stop. So goodbye, my darling beloved, sweet Alex. And this does not count as a letter. God bless you, my own dearest little girl. Ever your own loving Nikki. Queen Victoria to Nikki, April 22nd, 1894, Windsor Castle. Dear Nikki, I must thank you very much for so kindly sending me that splendid copy of your travels, which I shall value very much. I need not say how much my thoughts have been with you and my sweet Nikki since we left dearest Coburg, and I am sure the parting from her will have been very painful for both. We are looking forward with such pleasure to her arrival on Friday, and I shall watch over her most anxiously and carefully that she should get rest and quiet and do all to get strong, which she has not been for some time. While she is here alone without you, I think she ought to go about and out as little as possible, as she would be stared at and made an object of curiosity which in her present position as your bride would be both unpleasant and improper. As she has no parents, I feel I am the only person who can really be answerable for her. All her dear sisters, after their beloved mother's death, look to me as their second mother, but they still had their dear father. Now poor dear Licky is an orphan, and has no one but me at all in that position. Anything you wish, I hope you will tell me direct. I am so sorry not to be able to take her to Bemoral, which is the finest air in the world, but it was rather too bracing for her two years ago. I hope in the autumn she might be able to do so. Believe me with true affection, dear Nicky, your devoted future Grandmama, Victoria R. I. Nikki to Queen Victoria, May 7th, 1894, Gachina. My dearest grandmama, let me thank you deeply for your kind letter. That was a charming surprise and it gave me a great pleasure. But I am so touched that you thought of me now, when I separated from my darling little bride, which was really very trying, as we only spent 12 days together after our engagement. I thank you so much for all your kindness at Coburg, which you showed me there. I shall never forget our breakfast in your room and the music playing outside. It is very kind of you, dear Grandmama, to watch over her yourself, and I am most pleased to hear it from you, as she shall remain quiet and not go about. I wrote her yesterday and told her exactly the same, only, of course, that was said in the form of a wish. My parents felt so touched and grateful when I told them all the events of our stay at Coburg, that they wish me to express their feelings of joy and gratitude for your attention and kindness bestowed upon me. I'm already looking forward with such a pleasure and 
impatience for the day when I'm able to come and see you and my darling Alex at Windsor. I hope to stay at Balmoral will do you the best possible good, that your precious help will make us happy when we meet again in Windsor. I really don't know how to thank you enough for have taken the trouble of writing to me such a charming letter. With my very best love to you, dear Grandmama, believe me, your most affectionate and devoted future grandson, Nikki. Ella to Nikki. May 22nd, 1894, Moscow. Dearest Nikki, I send you some religious books you might bring her. Perhaps, after all, it would be good if her becoming Orthodox were an official act at Petersburg. People are so odd, you know, and might think if it is private that one hides something from them. And first impressions are those which cling all through life and can either directly make her popular or leave a slight shade. Your tenderly affectionate sister, Ella. Alex to Nikki, May 25th, 1894, Harrogate. Good morning, my own precious Boise. My birthday, 22. Oh, how I wish you were here, beloved darling. And your glorious bracelet, you naughty monkey. How could you dare to give me such a magnificent thing? I feel quite shy. And your telegram, you do spoil one. I must flee to my water and goodbye. We have been arranging flowers all the morning, which some kind angel has sent me. More tonight. Queen Victoria to Nikki, May 25th, 1894, Bemoral Castle. Dear Nikki, I write to you on this dear day, our darling and Nikki's birthday, which I am sure must be very dear to you, and I also wish you many happy returns. Thank you for your very kind letter of the 20th of May for my birthday. It was the only very warm day since we came here. The weather has been quite unusually cold to last so long, and we had a great deal of rain, but it is much warmer. The accounts of dear Licky are upon the whole satisfactory, but she requires great quiet and rest, and I send you the copy of the letter from the doctor at Harrogate, who is very clever, a nice man. She keeps a strict regime of life as well as diet. She has to lie down a great deal. This ought to have been done long ago, but the family doctor, in whom unfortunately they have great faith, is a stupid man who never will do anything and says yes to all they ask. Last autumn and winter she ought to have done what she is doing now. Her dear father's death, her anxiety about her brother, and the struggle about her future have all tried her nerves very much. You will, I hope, therefore not hurry on the marriage, as she ought for your, as well as her sake, to be strong and well before that. You had better not arrive till the 30th of June or the 1st of July, as we shall not arrive till the 21st or 22nd, and then a licky would come to us and still rest a good deal. Pray offer my affectionate respects to your parents, and believe me always, your most affectionate future grandmama. Alex to Queen Victoria, May 28, 1894, Harrogate. My darling grandmama, I send you my very fondest thanks for your dear letter and kind wishes, which touched me deeply. Please accept also my best thanks for the nice photo of you and Uncle Bertie, and for the delightful tea basket with which I am quite enchanted. The sun shone on purpose so that we could go for a long drive and use it. It is a most useful present, and I have long wished for such a thing. Victoria being here for my birthday was a great pleasure, as it would have been too sad to have to have spent my birthday without one relation. I have never been away like this without one before. You must kindly excuse my writing so seldom, dear Grandmama, but the baths make one tired, and I have to rest a great deal. As yet the pains are no better, but I hope in time that the good effect of the baths will show itself. It is pouring again today, which is distressing. I will go to Walton, and dear Nicky would then join me there. 
His father is lending him his yacht so he can go the whole way by sea, which is certainly the most agreeable way of traveling. Yes, darling Grandmama, the new position, I am sure, will be full of trials and difficulties, but with God's help and that of a loving husband, it will be easier than we now picture it to ourselves. The distance is great, but yet in three days one can get to England. I am sure his parents will often allow us to come over to you. Why, I could not bear the idea of not seeing you again, after the kind angel you have been to me, ever since dear Mama died. And I cling to you more than ever, now that I'm quite an orphan. God bless you for all your kindness to me, beloved Grandmama dear. I have no words to thank you enough for all. Please do not think that my marrying will make a difference in my love to you. Certainly it will not, and when I am far away, I shall long to think that there is one, the dearest and kindest woman alive, who loves me a little bit. Goodbye, dearest Grandmama. Ever your very loving, affectionate, and dutiful child, Alex. Alex Tanicki, May 28, 1894, Harrogate. Dear Nikki, today, ten years ago, we arrived at Peterhof, and I for the first time saw and kissed my sweet louse boob. How dear and always kind you were to me then, our window panes. After we left Russia that year 84, I used for some time to pray for you, and then after 89, of course, too. As soon as I like anyone, I cannot help praying for them. To think that I know you already ten years, a long time, is it not? I see you still at the wedding service holding the crown over Sergei. How much has changed and happened since then? It makes one quite melancholy. Nikki to Queen Victoria, July 26, 1894, Camp near Krasnoselo. My dearest Grandmama, your kind letter touched me deeply, and I beg you to excuse me for not having answered it at once. I cannot tell you... Dear Grandmama, how very sad I felt I had to leave you and my darling Alecky on that dreadful Monday night. It seems to me quite like a delightful long dream, my stay in England with you, the spell of which has suddenly been broken, and I felt myself taken far away and left lonely to those never-to-be-forgotten recollections. I cannot thank you enough for all the loving kindness and attention you showed me, dearest Grandmama. It made me feel so happy that you should have allowed me to have called myself your grandson. I wanted to tell you all this and thank you for it when I was to leave, but I was so upset that last evening that I could not possibly bring one word across my lips. I loved Osborn so much and was too delighted when you asked me to spend with you the last five days there. It is so nice having dear Aunt Alex and cousin stay here. And I am especially glad for Mama's sake, as their presence will soften the pain from the separation with Xenia. She felt it deeply the last days, though she tried to hide her sadness so as not to make Xenia sorry. The wedding went off very well. They both looked most happy. It was a pleasure for me seeing them standing together before the altar. So bright and clear was their expression. They were both deeply thankful for your table and tea set that I brought over with the yacht. The service for the marriage did not last long, but we remained at the palace for the rest of the day. Alex Tanicki, July 27, 1894, Wolfsgarten. Oh, lovey, had I but got you with me, I want you too badly. A mad longing takes hold of me, and I don't know how to keep quiet. I am burning for a kiss, and to feel myself clasped tightly in your arms, safe and protected by the most loving of all beings. You must come here. Still life in the country is so different from the town life. We can be out all day in the woods without meeting anyone, can be quite to ourselves in God's beautiful nature. We too, alone, under the magnificent trees, loving each other with all our hearts and feeling so utterly content. July 29th. My own beloved darling, I am selfish and greedy and want the best things for myself. Shocking, is it not? I don't think you can cure me of that. Me want you, and only for me. You see how greedy I am. 
Poor little Xenia, what a beginning of married life, being spilled into a ditch. Thank goodness they were not hurt, but the wretched coachman, I trust it is nothing serious. Alex. Alex Tanicki, August 6, 1894, Wolfsgarten. My own sweet darling, do you know the great excitement here it is to see a wild cow? Since five o'clock she is in the woods, and now every evening comes quite close in the grounds. She ran away from her people near the main. The others saw her yesterday. To their joy, she has a chain around her neck. A 100 mark reward for the person who catches her alive. But she is so shy and frightened that as soon as anybody approaches her, she dashes off again. Nikki to Alex, August 9th, 1894, Peterhof. My own darling Alex, I was simply enchanted to get your dear number 75 this afternoon. Thank you fondly for it, and the violets, which smelt still deliciously. I cannot make out what you call a wild cow. Is it sort of like a simple cow or something else? If you had a few call sacks there, they would certainly have caught it in a few hours. It must certainly be easier to catch an old cow than a wild horse. August 11th. My own darling lovey dear, so many thanks for your kind number 77, which came at its usual hour in the afternoon. How did the news about my father not being quite well reach you? I also got a telegram from Granny asking me about how he felt. But, thank God, there is nothing to be anxious about. It is the fatigue from having worked all these years far into the night. The old doctor from Moscow says he must rest for a couple months and change air for some time. That is why going to Poland, where the air is dry, ought to be good for him. We'll leave for that place today, a week, but if there is any change, I shall directly wire off to you. Poor Papa is in very low spirits, having to give himself up into the hands of the doctors, which is of itself a bore, not always a last to be avoided. He feels it more than the others do, having been ill only twice in his life, 22 years ago and this winter. We try to cheer him up as much as we can, and now he is pleased to go to that place Belaveya. The Weeping Willow is also coming there. Greek Nicky, too. <sighs> My sonny, were you only here, I would feel quite else than I do now. But enough of this. Uh, now I must run downstairs and fly on horseback to the other house. A tender kiss from your own loving and devoted old Boise, Nicky. Nicky to Alex, August 13th, 1894, Peterhof. My own precious darling, I am devouring one of the books you gave me, The Iron Pirate, an uncommonly interesting book. You must read it when I come. That is the first book I have taken in hand since our engagement, but instead I know all your dear letters by heart. <laughs> After that, what do I care for the rest? August 16th. Many thanks for your dear number 82, which gave me such a great pleasure, as none came yesterday. So your poor leggies have again hurt you? Very naughty of them. I wish I was there to have rubbed them, at least. I don't know, but I feel so frightfully low today, and this evening especially. I don't like my dear Papa's look at all. He coughs so much, they say it's an irritation of the throat. And he hardly can sleep for more than a couple hours in the night, which of course wears him out completely for the rest of the day. To think that this is the result of having worked too much by night? Sometimes even often up to three o'clock in the morning. I cannot tell you, my darling, how this depresses me. Nearly all his favorite things he likes so much, fruit, milk, etc., disgust him now, though he eats with appetite at luncheon and at dinner. But tea and coffee he neither touches. With that, luckily, he has got no pain nowhere. The doctor says he only needs rest and sleep, of course. But that cursed weakness... That is the thing I don't like. But God grant, with the change of place, of air, of life naturally, this bad condition of his shall pass, as it did in winter. I must begin packing my things. Goodbye, my own beloved childly dear. With tenderest kisses and love from all, I remain your own deeply loving, true, and devoted old manny, Nicky. Alex Tanicki, September 11th, 1894. 
You old monkey, how dare you say you will kiss me without my permission as much as you like. I never heard of such impudence before. You better not try it, otherwise my revenge will be most terrible. Oh, dear one, I long for you more and more, especially now that you could not come as soon as intended. What joy when we then at last do meet and I can clasp you in my arms and gaze into your precious face and beautiful tender eyes and kiss you gently, always more and more till there is no escaping for you any more. When once I have got you, you will not be free again so soon. I shall smother you with kisses. Nikki to Alex, September 15th, 1894. Spala, my own sweet darling. How I wish I were not obliged to write you the following lines. But first of all, let me thank you for number 115, which did arrive yesterday after 116 I came. As you must have seen or heard from the papers, you will probably know by this time that Dr. Leyden from Berlin has been sent for. The doctor is very nice and comforting. He said he found Papa's condition better than he had thought, and that except for the illness, something in the kidneys, his weakness came from the nerves. I wanted to tell you this before we had met, but now I could not have explained to you otherwise the reason why I am not coming so soon and why I am going with my parents to Crimea. But you will understand that I could not do otherwise than to sacrifice my own happiness for some time. Of course it is too hard not to be able to fly over to you. I could not do otherwise than this. My decision that I have taken after a whole day's violent struggle as a devoted son and my father's first faithful servant. I have to be with him wherever he needs me, and then how could I have left darling mother at such a moment? Alex to Nikki, September 16th, 1894, Wolfsgarten. My own precious darling, I cannot tell you the state I am in. I feel too miserable for words. What a blow that telegram gave me and a gloom fell upon all. I could only laugh when I deciphered your telegram and chatter away and play the piano madly, but when I was alone in the dark in my bed, that it was finished and the suppressed tears streamed with all their might, I can only laugh gently. No, it, it is too hard. Really, one must never look forward to anything in this world. One is so quickly disappointed. Queen Victoria to Nikki, September 23rd, 1894, Memorial Castle. Dearest Nikki, I thank you very much for your kind letter of the 23rd of September and all the interesting accounts of the sport. We have been so grieved to hear of your dear father being so unwell, and rejoice to think that you were with them on their long and anxious journey. I long to hear how the Emperor feels about his arrival at Lavadia, and how soon the journey to Corfu will be undertaken. Is there a comfortable and large enough house there? And is your brother Georgie going with you? Poor dear Licky is much disappointed as to your visit to Darmstead being delayed, but she feels that your duty is to remain with your parents, and she writes to me, I only love him the more for doing so. As the shadow of death drew near to Alexander the Third. Princess Alex arrived in Lavadia for the Tsar's blessing on October 9, 1894. Shortly after her reception, which Alexander insisted he attend in full dress uniform, his health began to rapidly deteriorate. On October 20th, 1894, Alexander III died of kidney disease at the age of 49. Nikki succeeded his father, becoming Nicholas II, Tsar of Russia. This has been an episode of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a product of the Milburn Stone Theater at Cecil College, produced and edited by William Bryan. This episode features the voices of Faith Sullivan, Michael Anderson, Lily Wirth, Rachel Barton, and Tom Worthington. For more details, please visit milburnstone.com.